So I made a wish and today I've got more boom arms to check out. And it's probably no surprise that the boom arm that I got the most questions about was the blue compass. So I bought a compass specifically to check out for myself because I have never used one before. And my original plan was just to compare these two because these are some of the two most popular choices around. I got a pretty ridiculous care package from Buzzsprout where I host my podcast and that included a Gator Frameworks tube style boom arm, which I had never heard of before. So after watching this video, we're gonna see if the direction points you towards the compass, if the PSA one is the road you wanna go down, or if the Gator Frameworks is the one that works for you and makes you say, you got a Gator sometime later. And I'm gonna give you two spoilers just right off the bat. First, these are all terrific boom arms. There's a huge difference between the $100 and up price range versus the like $13 one that I did in the last video. A $13 boom arm is just trying its best to just be a boom arm. In this price range at the higher end level, you not only have really good boom arms, but they each offer some specific innovations. Like there's room to try new things and to offer new features, not just struggle to meet the minimum requirements. And the second spoiler is that I just recommend the Rode PSA-1. If you just wanna know which one do I get, get the PSA-1. I'm also super biased. The Rode PSA-1 first rode into my life in 2014, and now I personally own two of them, and I've ordered about 15 of them for my job throughout the years, and I've never had any issues with a single one of them. You can see right now these all have Rode pod mics on them, which is a very heavy microphone. And the Rode PSA-1, just right out of the box, wherever you put it, it will just stay there no matter how high, no matter how low. It's just the easiest one to use. It feels really good to move around. It's just, it's just so well made. If you do need to ever tighten it up, there's just two little, three actually, little tension screws right here. And that is it. That's basically everything you need to know about the PSA-1. It's amazing. But chances are, if you're watching this video, you might already be familiar with the PSA-1 and you're wondering about some of these other things. So let's look at them. And the blue compass really blew me away by how cool it looked as soon as I took it out of the box. It has become incredibly popular over the past few years and it's not uncommon at all to see this on video podcasts because it does have an awesome design and it looks really good on camera just like I do and that's probably why you're seeing it on camera a lot more often. This is a tube style boom arm so everything is internal, it just feels very solid. It's all made out of metal except for the little adjustment knobs. The stand is super sturdy and the springs are incredibly strong. It's pretty versatile in terms of poses that you can position it in. It's very, very well built and it has this really cool feature right up here. It has these little plastic clips that you can just pop open. It says that you should be able to do it with your fingernail, but <laughs> I like almost ripped my fingernails off doing it, which is terrible. So I'm using a tiny screwdriver. And then instead of having to worry about how to route your cable, you can just clip your XLR or your USB cable, depending on which microphone you're using, right into the arm itself. And then you've got a really nice clean setup. So the only place that the cable is visible is down at the end and then right here at the hinge. Otherwise, it's all internal. I get a lot of questions about these colored cables, so I'll put a link in the description. They're cool, they're colorful, I like that about them. The quality is fine, so they're not like the most amazing cables in the world, but they look great on camera, and that is helpful when you're using something uh, like the Rode PSA-1, where you need to attach the cable externally. Now, I'm gonna be really honest with you. With how popular the Compass is, I was expecting to get it and just kind of think it was the best boom arm ever, but there are actually a couple things I don't like about it. Namely, it's just so strong that there's nothing I can do to alleviate this amount of tension right here. And I know you're probably thinking, Tom, you're wrong, as usual. You can adjust the tension. Don't you know anything? How dumb can you be? And you're right, I can be dumb but also you can adjust the tension. There are these little friction knobs here to adjust things, but once they get turned tight, they become kind of useless. They don't really make that much of a difference. This one is as tight as it will go. And as you can see, I still can't keep the arm low. They're also very plasticky and it feels like if you really like turned it down, it would break. 
Now, fortunately, on the bottom of the compass, there is a little tension screw. So right here, you can turn this screw right to add tension or left to relieve tension on the springs. So if you're using a really lightweight microphone, they tell you to turn it left so that way there will be less tension and the microphone will, will stay weighted. If you are using a heavy microphone, then you can turn it right and add more tension. But the problem, and I'll show you this. So right now I'm having a problem with the microphone springing up, which would mean there's too much tension. So I can loosen this. And I'm just doing an example right now. I have spent like an hour trying to experiment with this. And I can get it to the point where this is about as little tension as there is, and it still is going to pop up. But also now if I extend it out, it's gonna droop. So then to prevent that droop, I need to tighten this to add in more tension. Pay attention to how much tension you add. So now if I add enough tension where it's not gonna droop, it's also gonna pop up no matter how tight I have this here. So that's kind of frustrating. The instructions tell you to keep it so it's balanced at a 90 degree angle, which it does no problem. And then yes, if you just kind of want to do that very traditional pose right here, it's very, very easy. If you want to keep it low and extend it out where all the weight is at the end, that's easy too. But if you want to keep it kind of like this and low, it doesn't really work. You have to kind of push it back and then out, but then it's not necessarily in the right spot. But here's the difference. If I bring in the Rode PSA-1, just no matter where I position this, no matter how far out, no matter how close, no matter where, I can just, it's an interesting sound, I can just position this exactly where I need it and it's just gonna stay there. So much of this just depends on your setup. You know, how many of these are you gonna have? How much room are you gonna have? How much reach do you need? If you're gonna be really close to it, you might find yourself kind of struggling a little bit. If you're gonna be further away, you're gonna end up putting more weight on it, which will make it easier to, to position where you want. So for me, the fact that I had to spend so much time adjusting the tension kind of caused some tension between me and this boom arm, especially because I couldn't even get it exactly the way that I wanted, where again, just straight out of the box, the PSA-1 delivers exactly what I was looking for with no other adjustments. And that brings us to our third boom arm here. And the Gator Frameworks might reframe how you think a boom arm should work because it has some pretty cool features. This is basically, in a lot of ways, a hybrid between the Compass and the PSA-1 because it has the tube style and the metal kind of modernish design of the Compass, but it has the positioning flexibility of the PSA-1. So I haven't had to adjust any tension or anything, and this thing will just kind of stay wherever I put it. It has these giant knobs right here in the same positions where the compass has its knobs, but these ones actually work really well. So you just tighten it down and you're all set. The whole thing is made out of metal, but these hinges are a really hard plastic and the knobs are hard plastic. It doesn't feel like they're gonna break or anything, but it's just something to be aware of. It also has a feature that you might be noticing that could either make or break whether or not this will work for you. And that is an internally routed XLR cable. So it comes with a pretty long, actually, here's the cable itself, a pretty long XLR cable that's a good quality, it sounds great, it works great, and it's routed up inside here, so you don't need to attach anything, you don't need to route anything through a channel, you just plug it into your microphone and you're all set, and the other end has plenty of length to reach your mixer or your recorder. The downside, of course, would be if you wanna use this with a USB microphone because it only comes with an XLR connector. So that would mean you would connect your USB microphone, you would still need to externally wrap it around here, and then you would just have this thing sort of hanging out here. And also, if something were to happen to this cable, if it were to break or get damaged, then you have to take it apart somehow and replace the cable, which would be a big pain in the butt. I wouldn't expect this cable to fail for at least a really long time. You know, take care of your cables, they're gonna last. This one's protected inside the boom arm, but that is something to be aware of. If this works for you, if you're using an XLR microphone, this gives you a really clean setup where you're never gonna have to worry about cables at all. But there is one incredibly weak spot with this boom arm, which is disappointing considering it costs $130, and that is the clamp that attaches it to the desk. And once the arm is in there, it feels pretty good, and if you just kind of keep an eye on it and make sure, you know, every so often you check that it's still mounted securely, I think you'll be fine. It also comes with padding on both the top and the bottom to protect your table, which is super cool. But if you notice, with both the compass and the road, their mounts position the actual weight of the boom arm 
on the table, whereas the Gator Frameworks positions the main weight of the boom arm off the edge of the table. So what that means is no matter how tight you have that clamped on there, as you're moving this around, even if you're being gentle, it's gonna kinda naturally wiggle itself loose a little bit. And that is very frustrating. Now, there is a solution. If for some reason you happen to have a road clamp, maybe you're not using a PSA one anymore or somehow you managed to break one, this arm works perfectly with it and it actually looks pretty good and then you solve all of the problems. But depending on your setup, if you already have some of these, if you've already got holes drilled into your table or your counter and you don't even use these clamps, you just mount the arm directly into your recording table, then that wouldn't be a problem at all. But it's something to really be aware of because this is, it's kind of a weak design. It's like a really beefier version of what the cheap boom arms come with. Probably after that somewhat biased explanation, you might be able to see why I just prefer the PSA one. And this is the one I recommend. It's a hundred bucks, you're all set. Kind of never have to worry about your boom arm again. However, there are a couple downsides. One, the design is pretty old school <laughs> and retro. I like that, so it doesn't bother me at all. I love the design of it, but some people like the more modern look, which both of these, the Compass and the Frameworks, they look really cool and look great on camera. So if you just have that visual preference and this one might not work for you. The other thing that I've never liked about the PSA one is actually this little attachment here where the microphone connects to it. It has these two metal knobs and to tighten it or loosen it, you kind of have to turn them opposite directions at the same time, which is awkward if you're also then trying to position the microphone and turn two knobs. It's always been annoying to use. It's not a big deal. It's not like it's gonna break or anything. It's just always been kind of annoying to me. And the other thing to be aware of is because this is a scissor style boom arm, that does give you the possibility of pinching your fingers. Trust me, I've done it. There are very strong springs in here, and that really hurts. And of course you can avoid that just by being more careful than me, but it happens. And if you're recording a lot with people who maybe aren't used to using arms like this, maybe you have guests on your show or something, they could easily pinch themselves on accident. And more than likely also, if you have kids and you have one of these set up at home, they might want to play with it, move it around, and then accidentally pinch themselves in it. And it really, really hurts. I have found especially this back section is where I have pinched myself the most because sometimes you're just not paying attention, you're just trying to move it out of the way, you accidentally grab it wrong, and then you pinch your fingers. Not fun. Since both of the other boom arms are tube style, it's impossible to pinch your fingers, which is awesome. To give credit where credit is due, the Blue Compass is a really great boom arm. My biggest gripe is just with the way you have to adjust the tension. Of course, a lot of that's gonna depend on how you wanna position it, and of course, how heavy the microphone you're using with it is. The pod mic is like the heaviest mic I've ever used, and it's still has these issues. The internal cable routing is really cool. The overall build quality is fantastic. The mount that goes on the table is really great. The visual appeal of this, if you want that sleek modern look, this thing is awesome. So there is a lot to like about it. Just the tension and the adjustments are kind of weird and these turny knobs that just sort of feel a little too thin and a little too flimsy bother me. Since you are providing your own cable, with the Blue Compass, you can use USB or XLR microphones with it. It doesn't matter. Kind of just the same as the PSA-1. And then finally, the Gator Frameworks, which if you're using an XLR microphone and you like the tube style, this is probably the best choice. Its tension and position abilities are adjusted pretty much perfectly, just like the PSA-1, but it still has that modern tube design of the Blue Compass. It does have a big logo on the side, so that may or may not be a problem for you depending on how you position it. The internal XLR cable can be a really cool thing if you're using an XLR mic, but if you're not using an XLR mic, it kind of rules out this boom arm altogether. And the stand, the clamp that mounts to the table, just the fact that it's kind of an annoying thing you have to worry about at all, that does bother me a lot. If you have a different way of mounting it, like I said earlier, then this could be the perfect boom arm for you. So in the world of boom arms, when all is said and done, what I think all three of these prove is that you really do get what you pay for. And down in the $10, $20 price range, yes, you can 100% get something that works and you can do great stuff with it. 
But once you invest a little more money, you're not only gonna get an overall better product, but you're also gonna get something that might add in some cool, more versatile features. And you're gonna get something too that's gonna last you a really long time. But again, I am 100% biased and partial to the Rode PSA1 still after this. I gotta say, I didn't make a big deal about this in my last video, but every time I use another boom arm, no matter how nice it is, and I come back to this one, I'm just always like noticeably shocked by how easy and nice it is to use. So for me, this is gonna continue to be my boom arm of choice, but just because it's right for me does not mean it's right for you. So I hope this kind of provided some clear <laughs> guidance on that. If you wanna know more though about podcasting gear, I've got an entire playlist filled with videos all about podcasting gear. You hear?